and now I need my shell code. So I have several other videos where I'm showing you like uh, getting a remote command prompt. Uh, this time, uh, let's let's launch another program. Let's uh, so I'll generate just a different uh, a different payload this time. So go to pen test uh, exploits framework three MSF payload. Let's do the Windows exec, and our command will execute. Let's launch the Windows calculator. Uh, our exit function. Let's use SCH. We'll send it out as raw. Now I need to pipe that and encode it so we strip out any bad characters. MS, uh, MSF encode. Uh, dash T for the type of output. We'll put, output it as Perl. Dash E for the encoder. We use one of my favorites, the alpha upper. And I uh, got something wrong there. Pentest exploits framework three. Pentest exploits. Ah, I'm missing the three. There we go. And we'll let this run, and we'll go back up here and grab our shell code. And I'll paste it in. And next, we'll set up our, our sockets. We'll send the header, followed by the junk followed by the EIP, followed by our knob sled, followed by the show code. We'll save it. And we'll go back. I'll close out. I'm going to turn off the postmortem debugger since I'm done with it. So I'll flip this auto from a 1 back down to a 0. I'll launch a bone server. And launch it again go back and sure enough bone server crashed and we were able to launch calculator now this was a malicious attack we might launch a Trojan or we might do a download download some other malicious backdoor program uh, I could have done the uh, the command shell which uh, I've, sh I've shown in in some other videos uh, so that's the process of fuzzing uh, all the way from finding the vulnerability to writing the exploit, but let's take it a step further. Let's show how to port this over to Metasploit. I already have under pen test exploits uh, framework three modules exploits Windows miscellaneous directory. I've already went ahead and ported this over to uh, to Metasploit, and I've created a file here called vulnserver.rb and uh, I'm not going to go through every line here, but what I just want to show you is that uh, uh, really it's just a matter of filling in the values. Uh, Metasploit makes it super, super easy. Uh, so I have here a name. I just call it Vulnerable Server BOF. Uh, description, author, me. Uh, some of the important ones here. Platform, you want to make sure you set the platform up. Uh, if not, uh, you won't find that you won't be able to use any payloads. So set the platform. The payload, uh, I have here, there's several options you can or several uh, variables you can set here, but I just have the bad characters. I don't really I haven't taken the time to find out exactly what bad characters uh, uh, are not supported, but I have here just some common ones like zero zero can have a null byte, can have the carriage return line feed, can have a space. I just put some common ones in there for targets. Now this is something else you you want to set. Uh, I have your Windows XP Service Pack three. I set what the return address is. This is for the jump to ESP, so that when we uh, pop off. Uh, the saved return address, we're going to go to jump to ESP. Default target is uh, set to zero so that it uses XP Service Pack 3 by default. If you don't have this set, then uh, then a user has to uh, manually set it. Now, register options. These are if you kind of want to set up any, uh, any preset defaults. Uh, for example, I have the remote port. I know that the port is 9999, so I went and set that. Uh, next, we define our exploit. Uh, connect. This is basically what I had in Perl, but now it's just in Ruby format. Uh, our header was trun space slash dot colon slash. For our junk, now my Perl script, I did 41, uh, did the uh, the hex 41 or A, and I did 2,003 of them. Here I'm just doing a nops led. Uh, Metasploit has a cool function called make nops uh, 2003. Uh, EIP. Now here I set to uh, bracket target dot ret bracket dot pack 
parentheses, single quote V, uh, single quote and parentheses. This takes that return address that you specified earlier and puts it into the little Indian format. Next I have my make uh, another NOPS let of 20 bytes. And then my final exploit has the header plus their junk plus EIP plus NOPS. And notice I don't have to put in the show code because the Metasploit, the user specifies what payload they want to use and uh, uh, encode it here. Uh, if the user does not specify an encoder, it does the default encoder, which is the uh, Shikata Gainai polymorphic encoder. Uh, now I'm just printing to the screen. We're trying it out and then uh, creating a socket or putting in our exploit. And that's it. So really not too bad to port your exploits over. I'll launch the Metasploit console. And while that's loading, I'm going to load up the vulnerable server again. And once this is up, here we go. Let's move this a little bit. And we'll do use Windows miscellaneous vuln server. And I'll uh, set my payload. Let's see. Uh, let's do yeah, let's do some VNC injection. I'll do VNC inject uh, bind underscore TCP. Uh, we'll set our remote host to be 10.0.1.21. If I do a show options here, you can see that we have, you know, the remote host, remote port. Auto BNC is true, so it'll try to automatically launch the BNC viewer. Uh, the local port, the remote host, etc., etc., and notice the default, uh, the exploit target is zero for XP Service Pack 3, all of which was defined in the uh, in my Ruby uh, file. So let's try exploit and see if we're successful. It's trying. It says no session was created. That's all right. Let's try it again because I know this will work. Let's do our re-exploit, and there we go. Now I'm looking at a VNC session of that remote host. So uh, I'm now looking at the same thing that the user is looking at. Here's, uh, I know it's kind of hard to see, here's the Windows VM, uh, the Windows Virtual Machine. But I go over, now I'm back on the Linux box and uh, looking at what that uh, user is looking at on their screen. So hope you enjoyed the video. I just want to show the entire process of uh, fuzzing to 